discussing Mayor's Goal 5, the Philadelphia government operates efficiently and effectively with integrity and responsiveness. 301 has revolutionized the way citizens interact with City Hall and has met a number of milestones over the course of the administration. 301 is associated with the City Goal for efficiency and responsiveness, which are in the City Goal statement. Here with us is Chief Customer Service Officer Rosetta Carrington Liu and Cheryl Johnson, Application Solutions and Service Delivery Manager. On the administration side, we have Mayor Michael Nutter, his Chief of Staff, Deputy Mayor for Public Safety, Everett Gillison, Managing Director, Rich Negrin, Chief Innovation Officer for the City, Adeli Bay, Human Resources Director, Al Dottilio, Director for the Center of Excellence, Jackie Linton, and members of the Philly Stat team. As usual, Mary Nutter will start this meeting with some opening remarks. Well, thank you very, very much, and I'm pleased to be here uh, for this session. Uh, Rosetta and Cheryl, thank you uh, both very much. Uh, customer service uh, is our business, and often I describe uh, the city government as a large service provider. People call us, they need service. It is our duty and responsibility uh, to provide high quality service at the lowest possible cost. It's also efficient uh, and uh, responsive uh, to the needs of our citizens. And uh, while we try to solve as many problems as we can, there may be situations where we can't uh, solve every problem that someone may have, or it may be uh, within another government or something like that. But for the things that we do, whether it's getting your trash picked up or an abandoned car moved or a uh, house that uh, may be having some challenges or any of the other eight million different things that people call us about, or at least uh, seven million uh, calls that we've received over the last uh, seven, uh, seven or so years. Uh, having high quality customer service is something I've always believed in in my entire uh, government service office as a member of city council representing a district. Uh, what I always said to my staff then is uh, those phones are, phones are ringing because someone needs us uh, and it's our job and duty to respond. And so I brought that kind of mindset uh, into the government and could not be more excited uh, than to have a 311 operation uh, that uh, I think uh, if not already, certainly over time, uh, will be considered one of the highest performing uh, and most important uh, components of a service delivery organization like the City of Philadelphia and that our customers, our citizens can contact us know they can get service and only really have to remember one number uh, in the entire city, 311. Thank you. Thank you. Well, on behalf of the employees at the 311 operation, I just want to express um, our deep appreciation for the sentiments that you, you said um, and be given the opportunity to talk about what we've done over the last seven years uh, within the operations. Uh, to your point, and I want to reemphasize this again, without your leadership, there would be no 311. Um, so, you know, I always have to remind folks that, you know, this is where we started on the left hand side. You know, so th typically the call center, they say we started from the bottom, now we're here. We actually, there was no program in place before. So we had to start from scratch in building this type of operation over the last seven years. Um, with that being said, there are a number of accomplishments that we have made during that journey. Um, everyone tends to remember, you know, um, I think of 311 as should be fully operational at this stage, but originally there were three phases to this operation for implementation. So the first phase was a launch, then we were going to go into the acquisition of technology. And then lastly, bring in a lot of the servicing first tier requests into the operations um, as part of our continuous improvement. Now that whole process should have been 18 months. So literally we should have been fully operational uh, April, spring of 2009. But because of you know the Great Recession that impacted the city, we um, really stood at the launch stage for about six years. Uh, but that didn't really stop the, the group from moving forward. Um, again, with the leadership of the mayor, his cabinet, um, with Dr. Barnett launching this, helping to launch the program. But I think a lot of this boils down to Rich's um, way of innovating and rethinking how government should work in the neighborhoods. We've been able to capitalize off of you know that time period to really redefine what 311 looks like. And I'm part of the 311 National Executive Council that's made up of about seven big call center operations, New York, Chicago, um, Denver, uh, the original 301 Baltimore, um, 
as well as North Carolina and Boston. And they have commended us on really changing and innovating that model to be a hybrid of not just a call center or walk-in center, but to really that we have gone into the communities to get to those folks that doesn't necessarily want to call government. Um, and in fact, it was a compliment to the team last week. We were having a, a, a board meeting, and um, one of the directors, who shall remain nameless, but is a big, big city that tried to recruit, you know, uh, Commissioner Ramsey, <laughs> complimented <laughs> us <laughs> and told them the manifesto this year was to do what Philly is doing when it comes to engaging with the folks in the community and not just being reactive or waiting for an issue to happen. So that's what we have done with this 311 operation. And we have, over time, um, received numerous awards and recognition. Um, and there are a couple I'm going to mention. There's a list on here. One just last week, right? Yeah, we got yeah. Two, two, this, two additional two this year. Yeah, yeah one last week. Um, but we were the first city to actually implement 311 into the police vehicles. So we've trained, you know, a number of the officers. Um, now with our new system, they're rolling it out again into the vehicles. But you don't hear a city whereby police officers can go on there, go in their vehicles, go on their laptop, and look at statuses in real time. And, the, and Mayor, she's being modest. They've trained well over um, 1,500 police officers, if you imagine, out of the entire mm -hmm. force of a little over 6,000, right? So right. that's almost a fifth of our force has been, has been trained so that they can utilize 311 um, on, on their, their MDTs. MDTs while they're in the squad car and in between arrests, which is really being emulated nationally. Other cities are doing that. Correct. Yeah. And we've heard from, from folks that they were surprised. You know, a police officer is, is a, a, a resident is complaining about a vacant home and they've called the city and they're actually able to go online and the MDT and say, here's the status. You know, which, and they were shocked that you can actually do that. Um, so we're proud of that. We're also proud of the fact that we were able to launch within the community our neighborhood liaison program. So again, we have people that have, you know, a number of issues in their community that they've been, you know, contacting the city about over a number of years, but they have no reference number. They don't know, you know, the person has left. They're starting over again and feel very frustrated. So we created a program where we'll train these folks. Um, and we've trained almost 1,800 of these, we call them community heroes, mm -hmm. to, to use our system electronically 24 hours a day to go in there, issue a, a quality of complaint. Uh, quality of life complaint in the system, they can track it. So we have 1,800 ambassadors that now can positively talk about the transparency. The agent doesn't see anything different than they do. So this is something that, you know, we've gotten a lot of positive response on, as well as launching the mobile app of the three years ago. Um, the difference with our mobile app is we have a very diverse community in Philadelphia, and about 21% of the folks um, English is not their primary language. So what we were able to do working with our vendor is um, come up with a, a strategy of rolling out seven, the, this mobile app with 17 <coughs> different languages that's trans, you know, translatable. So yeah. whether you speak French, Spanish, it doesn't matter. You can still connect with the city at your time. So Mayor, mm -hmm. and, um, one of the great things they did that, that I thought made perfect sense is they looked at how the city has been growing over the last um, years since you've been in office mm -hmm. and looked at the languages that those folks are actually speaking and then made those languages a priority on the mobile app. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the mobile app comes in very handy, especially around crisis time, mm -hmm. um, big events, you know, people go online and it's, it's very uh, easy to use and you can have other information, positive information besides just filing a complaint. You can see where the closest after school program is. You can look at your rec centers, you know, find out where they are. So it's very adaptable. Um, the whole goal within 311 and where we have definitely changed the model is we're, we're, we don't want people to necessarily call us if we can give them alternative to doing business with us. So we moved from just um, having customer service agents trained to handle exceptions and, and you know, easy questions to really using technology to help guide us along the way and giving these folks that want to do business online, giving them that opportunity. I think the big, biggest accomplishment for us, what I really, it really solidify what we're doing, and we're going in the right direction. It's not, it's not listed on here. It's probably going to be on the um, addendum. But we were shortlisted as a United Nations um, finalist this year. 
Um, so we were recognized for um, being a finalist for improving delivery of public service within the community, and that's it. Took it was like a seven month process. Um, so I'm very very proud of that. Um, where we who we are. And what we're trying to do when it comes to the vision, I mean, you made the vision very clear. Um, in fact, I'll, I often tell folks that, you know, when I came in uh, for my interview session with the team and, you know, I had a short meeting with you, you know, I had this fantasy in my head of saying, hey, how can I really make your life easier? And I thought you were coming back with all, you know, these different scenarios. And you just said, answer the call by the third ring. And that was pretty much it. That was my walking papers. It's like, okay, well, that's easy. Pretty, pretty straightforward. <laughs> pretty straightforward, right to the point. That's a key performance. Uh, yeah, 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 I was just saying to the phone, but at third, I'm not going to tell you what to do. Uh, we've obviously revolutionized that and moved so much further ahead. But you've always stuck, stuck to that vision of, again, the city being there to serve and welcome its residents and businesses with accurate information and transparency. Right. That's always been there. So again, we moved the needle from just being a customer service operation to really making sure that that customer's experience is now not just stopping with 311 because we have to evangelize this across the city as well. Um, so they may start off with 311, but many times there's a handoff, and we need to make sure that right. that that brand that we have of excellence continues. And I think you know it's um, you know again from the two main jobs that I've had in, in city government, but also overseeing the staff, and I know it's in some of your materials, I think helping the public understand that on the one hand, you've made your call to 311. Uh, on the other hand, the folks that you, the person that you just talked to um, is not the person who is actually going to deliver that service. They're not the person who's actually going to fill the pothole. They're not the person who's going to come out uh, and take your trash away. They're not the person who's going to uh, come and you know salt the road or move the snow. I mean, so but it's a it's a connection, it's a relationship, and it's then a path to getting that service done. Uh, and part of the difference here is that it can be tracked, and we can tell you where it is uh, in the system. But um, you know, when especially when folks would call my city council office, um, okay, I mean, but we have to work with other people, you know, to uh, to get that done to get you know dead, unfortunately, uh, you know, it might be uh, deceased animals on the road or something. I mean, you know, I'd say, well, ma'am, I'm, I'm actually not the person mm -hmm. who's going to come out and take care of that, but mm -hmm. I can get to the folks who, uh, who do that. So I think, again, helping, uh, helping our citizens understand how it all works, but at least it's going into a central place. It didn't fall into a black hole somewhere. It is going to be responded, and we're tracking to make sure that, A, the work is getting done, and B, how long did it take us to get that work done? Yeah. And you make a good point, and but from the customer's perspective, they don't really care, you know. True. And um, I call. I call the happen. city, and you drop the ball, you right. know. So we we've taken a different approach to to educating the customers on that, and which we've had to go and now really solidify our business partnerships with the departments to say, you know, well, we're we're doing the handoff. We're going to need your help um, to to help resolve these issues and Cheryl's going to get into that a little bit more but um, but you are correct it's 301 is the, the front door mm -hmm. um, but we as a city the customer is one customer and it's one city you yeah. know and we, we we're all partners in, in, in making sure that they're um, resolving their issues so one of the things that has happened because we're now in phase two um, we've had to reorganize our department um, to meet those specialized skills that are needed now that we have um, technology in place. We brought in our CRM, which is really just a centralized database where we know our customers' interaction, what they're calling about, why they're calling. We have data. So we've centralized that now. Um, so with our org chart, we are now uh, moving into an area where we have key professionals on board, such as Cheryl, who's going to be overseeing the CRM rollout, and to your point, those business relationships that are needed to say, if something says unfounded, what does that mean? 
you know, we need to take the bull by the horn and begin to make make those changes, you know, um, as part of a partnership and a collaboration with the departments. So Cheryl's overseeing the rollout and the enhancements of what's next on the CRM and other other uh, telephony applications. Um, we have Jim Morse who just joined us about a, a few months ago. Now Jim comes from the federal level, has 10 years in with um, um, the USA.gov platform. Um, he is from Philadelphia, um, and he's doing an excellent job and in, in, in have that experience to manage the from cradle to grave, that interaction with the customer. And then we have um, Amanda Wagner, who's overseeing the educational and awareness piece of the operation, where we're now targeting digitally. How can we create better awareness and educate internal employees and external stakeholders about what 301 does or what the departments do? So. You know, we have these three groups that are now a business unit that are overseen by the Chief Customer Service Operator. Question Officer. just to Al, which is uh, part of the onboarding. I guess it's going to get longer and longer as we keep hearing these things, but um, as as employees come on board, are they given a, an understanding of 311 and its role in government? So our onboarding, onboarding is done by each individual department, and we do onboarding for the eight departments that report under Rich. And we do an overview of the entire city government during our onboarding, including 311. And one of the things we'll do, um, Everett, for specialized units like Philly Rising personnel who need to know a little bit more, they actually go through some of the knowledge based training that 311 employees go through so that they understand when they're out in the community um, exactly how the city works, right. which department does what. But so to your point, we need to expand that. Yeah, I'm just, you, know, you have to be able yeah. to, when, when a, if you're going to say, it's one city, it's, yep. you know, I, I've said that the entire time, one city, one set of rules, you know, as we get into it, we all understand that everybody says, well, there's one rule, but it's interpreted 19,000 different ways. Yep. We have to stop that if we're going to really get across a consistent unified. effort and a unified picture from the, to the public. That's the one thing that kills um, confidence is the fact that if you have different people interpreting the exact same thing in 19 different ways, just because of department or inner rules, we have to be able to give people a solid foundation in how things work. And 311 is an important piece of how we do it, so that has to be part of the onboarding process. Okay. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Cheryl. So she's going to talk about the operational day-to-day -day experience that's occurring within 311. Um, and after that, we really we have a second phase that we want to launch to show you the next steps that are happening now that um, we roll out the CRM. So Cheryl. So to the um, mayor, to your point, where um, you were talking about the uh, citizens understanding that. 311 is the gateway into the city, but we don't actually deliver the service. Uh, this illustration actually shows how we are all connected in terms of being one city that services our citizens. And so 311 is that voice, and then we serve to communicate. And we provide information um, in all directions. We get it from our customers, we share it with um, our internal stakeholders. We also get information from our internal stakeholders to better educate not only 311 but also our uh, external customers. This next slide um, is a workflow model of this is what happens within 311. And as you can see, when we started this back in um, 2008, Rosetta came on board in May and I came on board at the end of. August, it was just a call center and a walk-in center. And today, you can virtually you can virtually reach us through every channel that exists today. So we meet our customers where they are. For mm -hmm. those customers who prefer to use technology, we're there. For those customers who still want to talk to someone over the phone, we're there as well. And believe it or not, we still get a handful of faxes and letters that come in, and we address those as well. Um, walk-in traffic. Walk and walk in traffic, yes. And that is, uh, walk in center is not something that's indigenous to 311s. It really has to do with culture and philosophy of each entity. And here in Philadelphia, uh, there I remember 
um, the mayor and um, Dr. Barnett talking about still providing customers with a high touch. And so for those customers, it's important to them to have that face-to-face, -face, we provide that as an option. 311 concentrates on three core things. We receive information requests um, and service requests and directory assistance. With directory assistance and information requests really making up the bulk, it, it comprises about approximately 80% of our actual contacts. And so while we hear a lot, we talk a lot about service requests, it really makes up about 20% of the scope of contacts that we actually uh, receive. What we are responsible for in 311 is the customer experience. The departments are responsible for delivering the actual service, but we are responsible for the customer experience, that we're providing accurate information, that there is a professional interaction and a courteous interaction with each of our customer regardless of how challenging our customers um, can be on occasion. The next slide goes now outside of 311. So we create the request, it gets routed out to the various departments, and then departments now are responsible for taking the action and then populating the 311 system with the appropriate information as to what actions they've taken. So whether that customer calls us back or that customer goes online to track the status, the customer can easily see what's going on. And one of the things that Rosetta was talking about um, and um, Everett, I also heard you say this about us needing to be speaking the same language. And that's one of the things we were very, very conscious of as we went through this implementation, making <coughs> sure that there was language that our customers understood so that they're not seeing things like you know, unfounded or unsubstantiated because it's very vague and it makes the customer think you don't believe what I'm saying. And so we've been working with our internal stakeholders to better um, have better communication so that everyone is on the same page. And one of the things that we did with the implementation project is we created statuses that are universal across the board. They mean the same thing in 311 as they do for the departments, as they do for our customers and external, internal and external stakeholders. This slide just gives a representation of the most popular inquiries that we receive. And as you can see, information and directory assistance, again, is the bulk of the information uh, of the uh, customer contacts. Uh, for FY15, our most um, popular five uh, information requests are listed, and then our most popular service requests. Now, the service requests can change over time because it can be situational, you know, the years where we had storm after storm after storm, um, then you would see snow and all of those storm-related events. But for this year, um, these are uh, the top five. I can tell you that maintenance residential, uh, rubbish and recycling collection, street defects, the first four under service requests are always in the top. They may rotate their place, but they are always in the top. What's your interaction with the, um, you know, you have your top five lists and I'm sure if you wanted to have a top ten list or whatever number you wanted. Um, do you interact with the managers of those uh, departments, especially where you're seeing, you know, an uptick or a changing, you know, in the order or something like that to make sure that they have uh, that kind of information from a broad standpoint of the traffic that you're seeing over on the 311 side? Are they, you know, aware, understanding of that uh, there's been pretty significant uptick so in your department. So one of the things that we do do is we have um, operational meetings with our high volume stakeholders. And we talk about everything, not just trends, but issues and education and changes that are going on so everybody is on the same page and there is an expectation. Yeah, one of the things- How often do you do this? It depends on the department. So some departments we do monthly, some bi-monthly. When we started, we were meeting weekly with some departments and as, as we both became more educated and things be, started working more smoothly, we've scaled back. So it's based on what's happening and we don't wait for those meetings. If something comes up, we'll do it real time. But what those meetings allow us to do is not become complacent and make sure that we're constantly um, trying to be proactive and looking and addressing, um, and addressing issues. From a policy standpoint, um when you have these conversations and you start seeing a, either an uptick from a trending standpoint or just a consistency standpoint, 
in the requests that people are making? Uh, are there conversations that would uh, get into the level of, you know, if we're seeing an increase in requests on this kind of service, how do we either try to address that on the front end uh, so that, you know, it's not so much left to the citizen uh, to request a service, uh, but that we are, uh, from an operation standpoint, or if it was something legislative or policy, uh, are we trying to address it on the front end so that it's less of a regular complaint and more of a regular action so by with the, the government? With the implementation of this new system, that's the direction that we're going in. This system gives us the ability to show robust and real-time data to our customers that allow them to see that so they can make operational decisions and to your point to become more proactive versus just responding to a request. Right. So what we're going to do is probably, um, I know you're short on time, but actually go through the demo mm -hmm. so you can see um, the mobility and, and what's coming up and what's happening right now to address the mayor's question. Um, we're moving away from... Is it up? Okay. So these, what you're seeing right now is you can have access to these dashboard department level. We'll show on at you. I'm excited. <laughs> Take it away, Denver. <laughs> <laughs> so these are. Um, this is an example of just you know one report that's available. But this for these reports can be at the executive level. They can be at the department head level. They can be at the lead zone level. They can drill down to the people who actually manage the request in the system mm. to see the details. Yes. So I'm showing you can actually use your your iPad or you can use a tablet. You can also these are available on your smartphone. So you have access to information. Um, 24-7 without having to call anyone. Mm -hmm. um, you can also drill down as yeah, part of this detail. as well right. for the details. Right. And, and just keep in mind this is for illustration purposes only mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so you can see uh, what the system is capable of doing. So you can... S so Cheryl, is this a dashboard view for the administration side? Or is this so a this is a dashboard that we created for the executive level, right? So at the mayor's level, at Everett's level, at Rich's level, they're going to want to see high level what's going on. And so if you focus, if you focus on these two, these would be something that um, not only the executive levels but the department heads would care about. What is our on-time performance? How well are the departments actually meeting their commitments? Because the departments establish the service level agreements. That's not established by 311. Right. So what they will now be able to do is to effectively measure how well they're meeting their own goals that they've established. And what we've built in here that we've never been able to do before, aside from the real-time data that we haven't been able to do before, we're able to tell them, they can see visually that they are bumping up against their due dates and they can make changes as they need to within their operation to help them to be more efficient or address, do whatever it is that they need to do operationally to help improve those um, statistics. For 311, one of the um, you know key measurements, and again, this is a education information uh, issue. On the one hand, 311 may show something as being quote unquote closed out. On the other hand, for the citizen, the problem is still ongoing. Why don't you explain what that language really means? Okay, so when it's closed out, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's completed. The department has taken some action and perhaps they've gone as far as they can go with the particular issue. Perhaps it's an issue that had to be referred out to someone else or the issue is actually completed. And this is one of the things that we are partnering with all the departments on now is to improve that language that's visible to the public so that the public better understands and that it's in easy to understand language, that there's no internal jargons, no acronyms, no abbreviations, that the, cus the customer clearly understands this is the status of that particular issue. Should we think about, though, from a, when we're talking about jargon and easy to understand, should we, uh, and I'm sure you all have talked about this before, but should we give some thought uh, to uh, either a reorientation or a renaming of what closed out is? Mm -hmm. if I'm, uh, 
I mean, to me, closed out means it's done. Resolved. Which is really what I care about. Right. All this other stuff, you know, in process, went over here, went down there, double back, did a boomerang, went somewhere else, immaterial. I called you. I call into the system or look up my number or whatever, and I might get a closed out, and I'm still looking at that car sitting outside. Right. So that creates a level of discrepancy, <laughs> if not, um, um, what's the right word? Uh, a credibility right. issue on what's going on with the system. Just because you sent it to where it's going actually doesn't mean it's done. Correct. I mean, so maybe on your side, maybe it's pending. I mean, I'm not going to tell you what language. I mean, you'll kind of figure that out. But so the what, concept so is, one of the things I wanna, it's only done when it's done. Right. So one of the things that I do want to explain is that now when the customer goes in, if they go online to put that number in, they're not just seeing clothes. They're actually seeing some language from the department that says why it was closed. And they're not seeing words like unfounded. It's actually saying, you know, here is why they closed out that particular case. because. We are aware the agents take a big beating for that for when customers are calling in saying, why did 311 close my case? And I'm looking at that pothole. I'm looking at that abandoned vehicle. And so what we are doing is working with our internal business partners to say, we have to do a better job in communicating out to the public as to what close actually means. So we have to have some set of statuses that allow us to run reporting um, accurately and easily, but there's also a category of public comments that each of the servicing departments are required to populate that allow the customer to clearly understand what happened with that particular service request and why it was closed down. Well, I think to your point, though, I think we, think do, about our yeah, we, we do need to probably bring some, some of the, these folks in um, because when we're sitting down, we're saying, okay, this looks good for 301, this good for the department, the customer may still be confused. Right. So maybe one of the things that we can do is actually bring that voice to the table um, of saying, does this make sense to you, customer, that sent the request? Well, I, I think that you've done a lot of education with both Citizen Academy. You have a lot of, uh, there's a lot of really good high, what I call high users. Um, you, you've trained, you said 1,800 folks that are the folks that are really the people in the community. Um, those are resources that are just sitting there waiting to be asked. Um, I would um, highly um, suggest that you bring in about 10 to 15 people who are in that, that area, but then also take a look at some uh, other uh, persons, uh, businesses that are, uh, who do this also, customer service, bring them in. And then have a round robin and literally just do a two to three hour session mm -hmm. on taking it from beginning to end, make it go right on through so that the end with the department's present, and that's the key. So that when, the, when if you're going to have a police officer or police officers there and they're looking at the vehicle and we know that it's going to take 45 days for the vehicle to get done, we should be able to still tag the vehicle and then be able to have some report that says what happened after it was tagged and whether it was moved. In between, not just we tagged it mm -hmm. and we're waiting for the 40 days to get done, but it's been tagged, the customer can see it because mm -hmm. they can actually look at it. Right. If somebody needs to take a picture of it and put it in your file, mm -hmm. and then if it ends up saying, well, no, the vehicle was not abandoned, the owner reclaimed it, then that should be entered into as the vehicle is no longer abandoned. We now identified the owner. Uh, it's probably public knowledge, mm -hmm. and that's where, and that's why it is no longer in the same status as it was. Or it was removed, and literally take a picture of the area that, with the car no longer there. Um, but that's the kind of stuff that has to be well, done. It, it, it's about setting and managing expectations, um, and again, um, it's the difference between. Well, you made the request and it'll get taken care of versus you made the request. Our service standards are something like this in a normal situation should take, you know, a week to 14 days. You sh that's what you should expect. Uh, but don't be surprised if, you know, if the citizen customer calls on day 15 uh, and it's still going on, we should be able to tell them something. Correct. Right? It, it literally, ma'am, sir, it's 
tomorrow. We're a day behind. Something happened. The sun didn't shine. It was, uh, you know, we had 20 inches of snow the other week, or, you know, whatever the case may be. But, I mean, a real, live, legitimate answer uh, as to, you know, kind of what really happened here. Again, customer service only really works when people believe that you're going to deliver what they've asked for and that we set a certain expectation. The better situation, of course, is we tell you seven to 14 days, we actually picked it up on day 12, you know, problem resolved, car's gone, pothole filled, trash picked up, whatever the case may be, and folks say, hey, I called those folks. They told me what it was going to be. Met or exceeded the expectation, I'm good to go. Right, on to the next thing. And I think with the acquisition of this new technology this year, we have the capability of doing exactly what yeah. you said. Um, along with these dashboards, I mean, these dashboards can be in your, your departments, it can be mm -hmm. you know, in your office, and you can see what's happening within the city. Any questions, we are now better able to handle. Good. But with that investment in technology, what you're speaking of before, we were hampered with mm -hmm. what we had, but now that's not an excuse well, anymore. 311, you know? I think, uh, you know, when it's, uh, I, I think it's the kind of thing when it's, whenever it's fully rolled out, mm -hmm. uh, it's never really done. There's always going to be a new thing. There's always going to be a new technology. There's always something else to measure. There's always a new challenge. Hopefully there are more people in the city. There are more calls coming in. There's always stuff to do. Um, and as systems become more and more sophisticated as uh, either our customers demand that sophistication or the marketplace is, uh, is providing it, uh, we need to make sure that we're staying on top of I mean, don't just get stuff because it's out there. I mean, it should be significant. It should be real. It should be important and useful. Uh, at the end of the day, and that we're not just measuring and collecting uh, data for the sake of measuring it and collecting it, but using uh, the data and the customer feedback in ways that enhance the customer experience. We are a very large service organization. We have multiple lines of business, uh, and when people call us, they have a reasonable expectation that their call is going to get answered in a timely fashion, that the person is going to be nice, that they're going to do everything they can uh, to try to resolve uh, their issue, and most of the time, probably can. Every now and then, may not. Uh, but I mean, just like big call centers that all of us call uh, on you know, the private side of our lives and retail experience, I, I think increasingly, um, if that's what uh, a citizen experiences uh, when they call in the private sector, uh, there's no way in the world that they're going to accept less uh, in the public sector, uh, which they are paying for directly. Um, and their, their engagement with, you know, I don't want to give uh, free advertising, but, uh, you know, their, their experience with a large retailer uh, is about a choice that they made. They can get that product here, they get the, the, that product there. There's only one entity to call about your trash getting picked up. It's not like you can call somebody else, right? So you're calling us. And that's what we do. The one thing that I will say, because I know that we didn't get the challenges, but I know that we've been planning for a unified call center that 311 is part of, and that um, City Council has a vote coming up on that, that will help not only push uh, and, and modernize the facilities that you're uh, working in, but also to get really a backbone and a new backbone uh, and a tie between 911 and 311 in, a, in the same area, the same center, but upgrade your telephone systems. I mean, right now, the systems are what we're really worried about. Um, and I want to make sure, is that, did I read that correctly, that is the, the systems behind the systems that we're still trying to upgrade yes. in order to help you do what you need to do, is that right? Yes. How old are the systems that we're to be even operating on at this point? From Adele, probably. I know we, we it's a backup um, 911 center that we're system. located in, so at least, 10 years old, hopefully. And I think, Everett, to your point, I think we've, uh, 311 and the managing director, they talk about plans of upgrading that, and I think the more prudent thing to do is to really wait for the Unified Call Center. I think that is probably the uh, best solution to make sure that we provide a unified network, a uh, unified uh, call center, not just for 311, but for all other areas. So. Um, I think if it comes in the fall, I think that would be welcome news. Well, I mean, from what I understand, City Council is supposed to vote. Um, it's on second reading. It's supposed to vote uh, one of the first two sessions of Council. Um, so I know that it is a priority for us. 
um, to get, uh, we have a great sponsor with the, uh, both public safety chair and also um, the uh, uh, councilman um, from that district, uh, Councilman Kenyatta Johnson. So we will be working together. Uh, it is a public safety issue um, in order to get this done. And um, I would hope that the citizens understand that we're out there trying to upgrade these facilities. Um, but that's the only way we can meet the mayor's goals of uh, making sure that the citizens have exactly the kind of background and the kind of uh, investment in technology that we need in order to make sure we can meet their needs. Great. Well, as we heard today, 301 is working hard to improve its operations on a daily basis on behalf of our residents. As the mayor has repeatedly said, we are all in the customer service business. For a more complete presentation of today's meeting, please go to the Philly Start website at philly.gov performance. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.